In Learning Objective 3, we're going to look at the stock markets. Where do we buy our stocks? Where are IPOs floated? Where are stocks initially sold? And then where do we participate and where do we buy our stocks? On which exchanges do we participate? Stock mar markets have been much more electronic over the years. Um, two primary stock markets we deal with, uh, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, and you see them pictured here. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange has a physical location with several uh, large rooms, 11 Wall Street in New York, and the NASDAQ has kind of a showcase, showplace, uh, tourist-type building in uh, Times Square, New York, and basically no trading goes on in that, whereas uh, active trading goes on inside the New York Stock Exchange facility. Uh, there are two types of primary transactions that occur at these markets. Primary market transactions, which we said in session one, is uh, the original sale of securities by the firm in an IPO format. And secondary market, or you and I play, we buy our stock uh, stocks on these exchanges. And these are uh, stocks that have previously been uh, issued by the corporation and traded actively among investors. So we generally operate on both of these exchanges. Obviously, there are more. There are regional exchanges. There are international exchanges where we can trade now. But these are the primary two and two of the largest uh, exchanges in the world. Our two most important stock markets, as I said, uh, were are the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, now known as ICE. Uh, on these two exchanges, you can see 40, 50, 60 billion dollars on an average day. And again, these numbers change slightly year by year. Um, average daily share volume, almost two, some days two billion shares uh, are traded, and they have to be traded perfectly. So the, they have to be very careful because we want to keep our investors happy. Uh, the value of initial public offerings, anywhere from 10 to 20 billion dollars perhaps some years hitting $30 billion as we move into the future. And each of these exchanges has about 3,000 listed companies. So a lot of activity going on on these exchanges each and every day. Um, let's talk about the difference between dealers and brokers. Dealers work on the NASDAQ. They're agents who buy and sell out of inventory, much like a book dealer or a car dealer. And brokers are simply matchmakers at the New York Stock Exchange. They arrange transactions of stocks between investors. So they match someone who wants to buy with someone who wants to sell. Uh, dealers on the NASDAQ work just like our book dealers downtown. The dealer will buy at the bid price and the dealer will sell at the ask price and the dealer tries to play that bid ask spread to make their profits. Um, here's an example. If your hard, the hard copy version of your book costs two hundred fifty dollars, a very expensive book, but it's the number one selling uh, finance corporate finance book in in the U.S. at the current time. So a very expensive but a very high value book. Uh, the bookstore will buy that back from you at the end of the semester for about half, uh, sometimes a little bit less than half, depending on when you get it in. If you get it in before finals week, you can get up to half of the original price uh, after finals week. Uh, that price goes down once they start meeting their quotas. They may buy it back for 100 from you, uh, resell it next semester for 150 and then they play that bid-ask spread and they make $50. Basically, they dust the cover off, put a used a book sticker on it and put it back on the shelf. And uh, the book um, stores have told me pers uh, privately that they make most of their money uh, on this bid-ask spread on used books, not on new books. So the used book market is where they make their money, and this is the same uh, methodology that goes on on the NASDAQ, where we have dealers working every day. Uh, brokers are matchmakers. Brokers work on the New York Stock Exchange. Again, uh, they don't have any inventory. They don't, have, they don't buy and sell uh, from their own accounts. They facilitate trades. So think of the New York Stock Exchange as matchmakers. Think of the uh, NASDAQ as dealers who sell from inventory. The organization of the New York Stock Exchange is such they have about 1,400 members uh, who own seats on the exchange. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange uh, merge with Euronext in 2007. John Thane from Goldman Sachs was president at the time, and he uh, pulled that merger off. Uh, after that, they acquired in 2008 the American Stock Exchange. So there used to be a separate exchange called the American, and it was acquired by NYSE Euronext in 2008. And then the New York Stock Exchange itself was acquired by Intercontinental Exchange, a European exchange, uh, November of 2013. Members 
of this organization can buy and sell securities on the floor without any commissions. Uh, seats used to be sold from for $1.62 million in April 2005. Things got very popular and seats were selling by the end of that year for $4 million. Nowadays, the New York Stock Exchange, ICE sells personal trading licenses for about 40000 a year, and that's renewable. You have to re-up re that, whereas the old seats were sold for a one-time price. Now, these are almost like personal seat licenses at professional football games. You buy a new seat every year. This lets you buy and sell uh, stocks on the floor of the exchange with no commission. There are members, four classifications of members, uh, d designated market makers, DMMs, uh, used to be called specialists. We have floor brokers who execute trades, supplemental liquidity providers, SLPs, and floor traders, which are uh, very small in number and becoming smaller and smaller in number because it's getting harder and harder to make a profit on the exchange floor. Specialists or DMMs are dealers for small sets of security, sometimes for just one security. Each security, uh, each stock that is listed on New York Stock Exchange is assigned to a single uh, designated market maker. These guys, also just called market makers, they're obligated to maintain a fair market for these securities, and they post the bid and ask prices, and they keep the uh, liquidity high is their goal. We also have uh, a second tier of members called floor brokers. These are New York Stock Exchange members who buy and sell um, for their customers. These are usually employees of the big brokerage houses, and again, they're trading for their customers on the floor. Supplemental liquidity providers are not on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. They're investment companies that trade for their own accounts, uh, typically via NYSE Direct Plus, an electronic trading platform, which accounts for a very large percentage of all trading nowadays on New York Stock Exchange, about a second per trade. Uh, a lot of times you'll enter that trade, and next thing you know, it's filled already. And uh, finally, we have floor traders who trade for their own accounts. They sit on the floor trying to make a profit. Uh, but it's, uh, these are becoming fewer and fewer in number, these folks, because it's getting tougher and tougher to make a profit in short-term trading on the floor. So again, we're seeing uh, fewer and fewer people on the f floor of the New York Stock Exchange, more and more electronics, more and more computers. Our goal at the New York Stock Exchange is to attract and process uh, order flow. Millions of investors, tens of thousands of uh, individual investors considered customers of the New York Stock Exchange. Not unusual for the volume to exceed 2 billion shares per day. That's a lot of trading going on, and it has to be perfect. The NASDAQ, uh, by comparison, is a network of dealers introduced in 1971. The New York Stock Exchange founded by the Buttonwood Agreement, 1792. The NASDAQ founded about uh, almost 200 years later, and it's a computer network. There's no trading, no active trading going on in that uh, building there in Times Square. Many days in NASDAQ trading is larger in volume than the New York Stock Exchange. We also have specialists down on the floor. Uh, they uh, operate in front of their posts, clerical employees down there also, and uh, commission brokers down there. So lots of people still on the floor, but again, starting to uh, decline in number with more and more technology, like Archipelago, which was a company, an electronic trading company, purchased uh, in 05 by New York Stock Exchange. John Thane thought it was time to, uh, time to get uh, the New York Stock Exchange more involved in technology, so he bought and integrated Archipelago. Uh, since then, they've also acquired uh, Euronext, one of the European exchanges, and now they're called the NYSE Euronext Incorporated, and they trade publicly on the NYSE as a public corporation. NASDAQ operations are a little bit different. Again, in this building in Times Square, there are no trades going on. It's just more of a come on in and learn about the NASDAQ um, kind of educational facility, uh, see how the NASDAQ operates. Um, it's an electronic network. It used to be the National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotation System, introduced in 1971 as a computer network and still is, and was ahead of the New York Stock Exchange in technology regards, but uh, New York Stock Exchange is catching up. And again, there is no one site. Uh, these are traders located all over the world, hooked up electronically via computers. Um, whereas, the, whereas the NYSE has a um, physical space, uh, NASDAQ, a multiple market maker system, uh, rather than a specialist system used by the NYSE. And NASDAQ is broken into three tiers. Uh, the larger companies, about 1,200 of them, are uh, called the um, 
NASDAQ Global Select Market GSM. So some of your larger, more actively traded companies are, are in the GSM portion of the NASDAQ. Then you have the global market, about 1,450 companies that are a little bit smaller. And then uh, the remaining 550 are in the NASDAQ capital market. And they're the really tiny firms that have just maybe jumped on board the NASDAQ. And as time goes on, they move up. As the company grows, they move up through these tiers. Uh, if you want to get these quotes, you can get uh, NASDAQ quotes um, in near real time, level two quotes, they call them, uh, simply by being an active trader with a company like a Fidelity or a Charles Schwab. Uh, generally, they give those quotes, access to those quotes for free uh, to their active investors. And it's becoming more and more prevalent on the internet when you go into Yahoo Finance and other sites to get a quote. Used to be, they used to be 20 minutes delayed. Now they're getting to be near real time. So. The investor has a real advantage knowing this near real-time price. Who's still listed on the NASDAQ? Well, a lot of companies that have been around for quite a while now. As we said in session one, Apple uh, being around since 1976, 1980, probably before uh, early 80s till they became public. But uh, they went on to the NASDAQ and they stayed there. Some of the old days, companies used to move from the NASDAQ to the NYSE in a prestige move. These companies who have stayed on the NASDAQ are happy where they are. So NASDAQ's giving them great service. Typically, high technology companies, um, Yahoo, Dell, Microsoft, Intel, Apple, and Starbucks has, have decided to stay uh, happily placed on the NASDAQ exchange. One very important thing to get out of a session eight is to learn to read a stock market quote, um, whether it be in the uh, Wall Street Journal on one of the various online uh, uh, platforms or in Yahoo Finance. So here's an example of a quote. Uh, this company is, has a ticker symbol COST, and you need to know that ticker symbol before you can trade a share of, of stock. This is for the company Costco Discount Retailer. Uh, first of all, one of the things listed is the previous close. What is the stock's price at close the day, uh, the day before? Um, next is the 52-week high and low. Uh, how high has the stock gotten over the past 52 two weeks and how low has it dipped? And again, if it exceeds that high price, let's say it goes up to $127, uh, you're going to see a new high tomorrow in the listing. Uh, next, you see the company name and the ticker symbol, COST. Uh, it paid an annual dividend of buck twenty-four. Again, a lot of these companies pay quarterly dividends. So that would be about um, 31 cents per quarter. This listing here, however, is the annual dividend. Uh, dividend yield, we learned earlier in this session, is D1 over P0, annual dividend divided by uh, today's closing stock price. So that should yield a 1.1%. And then the next reading is PE, not professional engineer, but price earnings ratio, price per share divided by earnings per share. We can uh, look at this PE ratio compared to others in the industry like Walmart, and Sam's Club and others, um, and see how we're doing the co the uh, price of the stock relative to the earnings it throws off. And we can compare it to any other uh, stock for that matter and see how we're doing against aspirin companies. <laughs> the next um, line item is volume. How many shares were traded in the day? A lot of shares. Almost 700,000 shares were traded in this stock, and every trade has to be absolutely perfect. And that's the role that the exchanges play, and they have to assure there are no errors each and every day. Finally, the closing price is quoted. What did the stock close at that day? And note that it was up 13 cents over the previous close uh, from the day before. Uh, yesterday it was 111.66, today it was 111.79, an increase of 13 cents. Make sure you know how to read these stock market quotes for your own personal uh, satisfaction and benefit. In session uh, eight, we have looked at three learning objectives. First of all, common stock valuation. How do I value a common stock? And how is it different than valuing a bond, which is seemingly much more uh, simple? Second, you should know now how what are some of the features of common stocks and how they are different than preferred stocks. And finally, where do we buy our stocks? Where do we shop? What are the markets for both initial public offerings and secondary market transactions, the New York Stock Exchange, and the NYSE? Hopefully, you've enjoyed Session 8 of Introduction to Finance.